and welcome back to the Autumn Acorn Knits. This is episode 73. My name is Judy and this is where I come to you once a month to talk about all the things that I've been dyeing, designing, knitting, and crocheting. Welcome. Uh, this is a little different today. I'm going to keep my glasses on the entire time. I do not have lights up, so we're just going to go with it. Meryl is trying to do push-ups over there. <laughs> if you hear Meryl, I do apologize. She's in rare form. All right, so I've taken lots of notes and Joe is not in the house, so we shouldn't have any other distractions besides Meryl. Uh, but today we have a whopping nine finished objects. I know, I know. <laughs> I got my knitting mojo back. I had lost it for a bit and just so happy it's back, but it's, it's back with a vengeance. There are how many whips? Five whips. Uh, and then I want to talk a little bit about our winter woodland knitting retreat that uh, Marie of Old Time Knits and I just returned from. And one other thing I'll mention at the end, and that is it. So let's just dive right in to finished objects. Uh, the first one is called Yet Another Stockinette. Cap or hat? Hat. Yet another stockinette hat. And this is a free pattern um, by Jasmine Davis. No picture. But what I love about this pattern, first I'll show you the hat. So here it is. Isn't that cute? It started out with a, is it called a pinhole cast on? This funky cast on, which I didn't do perfectly, but honestly, I think it's great. This is double thickness. So you essentially just cast on the number she tells you, increase until it's the size, proper size for the crown of your head. And then you're just doing knitting in the round and around and around and around. And then when you get to the other end here, I can show it to you as a full tube. When you get to the other end, you're just going to be uh, decreasing as you would with a bottom up hat. So yeah, my first top down hat, and it's a lot like the Muscleboro, but it's a free pattern, but I think it's, the, it's a similar concept basically. But um, I'm so happy with it and I wanna make more because I loved having the round and round ability to go on forever. This was some de-stash yarn called Dream in Color Smushy Sock Yarn. And uh, I'm not sure about the color. Let me check my notes real quick. I have so much that I wrote down, I, I just can't remember it all. Into the Mystic, it's called this sock yarn. And I do have quite a bit left over that I can throw into a scrappy blanket, probably, because it's a good amount. Look at that. That's a lot. And I used double pointed needles, as I always do, for small diameter things. I want to say these were a size US three, but I could be wrong. So that's our first finished object. Okay, the next finished object we're gonna go into are my Christmas socks and they are finished. Look at how pretty they are. I love this yarn. Now for these socks, I used the How I Make My Socks tutorial by Susan B. Anthony. I'm sorry. I always do that. Susan B. Anderson. <laughs> sorry, Susan. Um, and the yarn was called Vollenbein Blitzed in Sparkly Cider. That was the color. And I did um, the toe closure instead of doing Kitchener. I put my sock inside out and then I did a three needle bind off and it comes out so beautifully. I can't, you can't even tell 
the difference. There's no difference to me, and I just prefer it, so. Yay, so I may just go hang up my Christmas socks until next Christmas, I'm not sure, but they're fun, super fun. Um, yeah, that was everything. They took me about 15 days to finish these. Okay, number three are my gnomes. And I'm not gonna go into great detail because if you watched my Vlogmas for December, you'll have seen these little guys in process, in process, yeah being made. So we have, um, they are named Snome Man and Mr. Knightley. And they were really, really fun to do. This was a mystery knit along. It was my first, look at that little button. Can you see that? I'm not sure if you can, but it's a snowman. Um, my first mystery knit along. And it, this was by Imagined Landscape. It was a really fun process. I was a little disappointed though, because I thought I was just making one thing and it ended up being two. So when I finished this, I'm like, okay, why are these clues making it sound like we're making a gnome now? So it was a lot to do, but I loved it. And I'm so happy with these guys. Now they can sit up on the mantle every, you know, holiday season. Um, I use Knit Picks Palette in Fingering Weight. The name of the MCAL was Snow, ah, Snow Matter What. So they are sweet. I love them. I'm going to put them up on the windowsill for now. Okay, number four. So number four is a brand new design. This year, I'm going to take it easy on myself and only design four items, one for each season. So my um, beginning of the year design is, does not have a name yet, but it is a shawl. Uh, it is a small shawl and it has a ruffle. Let me make sure I have the front because it's kind of hard to tell the difference if you want the honest truth. Um, I'm not sure I've even got the right Where's the front? They both look good. Yeah, I think they're fine. So the, it's this garter stitch shawl, side to side construction, which is one of my favorites. And it has this really fun ruffle. So you would wear it, um, well, I would wear it like this. And under your coat or over your sweater. And then you have this, try to position that a little better. See how cute that looks? I love it so much. Uh, this one was knit with some beautiful yarn that my friend Kim sent me in a surprise goodie package in December. And um, I hope I'll tell you about it. I will tell you about it. The yarn is called Fleece Artist. It's Merino Slim. And Kim lives in Nova Scotia. So it is Nova Scotia yarn. I used a US 4 three millimeter um, knitting needle. And so this is version one. So this one is not held with mohair. When you see version two, which is a DK weight, that one is held with mohair, so. Oh, I should also mention, I'm wearing my Countdown to Camp Cardi. This has not been released. Um, I'm not sure if it will be, but it's it's a fun garter stitch, um, raglan construction uh, cardigan with these fun striped sleeves. And this is held, most of the sweater is held with mohair. But anyway, I digress. So that's, this is Ruffle Shawl number one. I love ruffles. Um, when I had my colors done and they also told me about patterns and uh, textures that I should be wearing, one of the things was ruffles. And I'm like, yes, I'm, I'm here for the ruffle. So I'm going to show you the second version of this same shawl, which has no name. Um, my friend Marie had named it. She'd given a suggestion over on Patreon of River's Edge Shawl. And I love the name, but it's already been taken, so I can't I can't take that name 
Here is the second version. And this version, oh my goodness, look how beautiful. This is big, it's bigger. And I held a uh, strand of mohair. So the main color is from Ritual Dyes. My dear friend Caitlin of the Cozy Moth Knits podcast gifted me this gorgeous yarn from Oregon a few years ago and I just couldn't use it. I loved it so much and I knew it would someday become the perfect something, socks or shawl. And so now it has. The um, brown color, the contrast color, is also a Knit Picks palette held with a strand of mohair that I had dyed up in pinks and corals and oranges. So the two yarns just, they worked so well together. Um, and yeah, it's, I think it's nice to have in the same pattern another option for yarn weight. I think that makes it pretty versatile. And it feels different, obviously, because there's no mohair. But, um, you know, you could also, if you wanted to, you could wear this just like a regular shawl, you know? You don't have to do it like I did it, but I liked it that way. I also have a gorgeous shawl pin from my friend Kim that I can wear with this under a coat and I think that would work really well too but I'll show you this version on if I can ever find the right side but we won't worry about that right now will we so again my preferred method always to stay warm like a scarf is this method um so yeah this is a little bit bulkier obviously it's DK weight Fingering with a strand of mohair to equal DQ weight. Uh, but as far as the colors, I definitely prefer this pink over those um, autumn colors, which I used to love the best, and now I just love decorating them with them the best. But I like pink. And that's all there is to it. So yeah, if you have any ideas for names, and then I will look it up and see if it's taken already. Um, or if you would be interested in perhaps test knitting this, um, I still need to have it edited, but uh, I would love to get this project going in February. So do reach out. It only took the one skein of the main color and then a 20, was it a 20 gram? skein of um the knit picks palette so not not a lot oh and i should have also mentioned i used a us6 on the dk weight version which is a four millimeter um needle so that worked out really well oh i kept my stitch marker on so i know which side was the right side of this one so yeah if you are interested in test knitting It'll be one test knit and it'll be for both the fingering weight version and the DK weight. Just let me know. Number six. Okay, number six was not knit by me. Um, this was a pattern that I released in December. This is the Magic Heel Socks toe up version. So everyone was asking for a toe up version. I don't knit toe up. I just don't prefer, I don't do it. I've never done it. Um, so I had my tech editor, she actually kindly, graciously offered to, um, to knit these Magic Heel socks toe up for me and they came out so beautiful. This was some yarn that I had naturally dyed with Matter and you can see there's a natural stripe to it, which I think is super cool. Um, and yeah, this pattern's been doing great. I released it, uh, at, as you, the main photo is a Christmas sock photo that another lovely tester allowed me to use for the main photo. So if you see a Christmas sock, you'll know that's the toe up version. So Carol, thank you so much. I will put her information down below. Um, if you'd like to go follow her on Instagram, she's a wonderful designer, tech editor of both crochet and knit if you 
um, need those services, she is your girl. She's just a wonderful friend too. So Carol, I know I thanked you once, but thank you again so, so much for these lovely, lovely socks that I can now wear. Don't they match? Don't they match this shawl really well? Oh my goodness. I'm gonna have to wear them on the same day, I think. Okay. Striped socks. That is not a finished up. Yes, it is. Wow, I forgot that I finished these when I got back from the knitting retreat. So this yarn was from a de-stash. I have never used this yarn. It is by a company called Gage Dye Works. And I'll tell you what, I'm gonna go look for some more because it is wonderful. I hope you can see that. I cannot tell if if my camera is focusing or not. But anyway, it's a um, it's the it's three seasons colorwork sock. Colorway is autumn. It's a merino twist fingering 8020 blend. And look how cute they are. Oh my goodness. I'm in love with these socks. Now, there is a mistake. You'll probably notice at the top. You see the little blue under that cuff? This one doesn't have that. Yeah, that's because I made the cuffs. They don't look alike. It's all wrong. It's just, I messed up somewhere. I don't know how. I don't know why I didn't realize it in time either, but basically this cuff is correct. And this cuff is weird. So I just fold them over so that they look good. Um, I cast on 64 stitches. I did a heel flap and gusset with a slip stitch heel, my favorite way. And I closed the toe with a three needle bind off by putting my socks inside out first and then doing that. They're nice and long, they're nice and warm. They're not exact as you can see, but I don't care, I think they're great. And I can't wait to wear them. Um, I used a US one needle, double points. And is that all I wanna say? I followed the Crazy Sock Lady uh, video tutorial for this one when I got to the heel, because I still can't do it without looking, you know, without looking at directions. Um, okay, so now we are already up to number eight, which I don't have with me, but I will put in some video footage. It is the Granny Stripe Blanket. I started for my son. I started this for him, it may have even been a year, six months to a year ago, and I rapidly finished it up when I was visiting family in Connecticut for a week so that I could leave it there with him because his 40th birthday is tomorrow. And so he got it a little early. And let me just tell you, my mama heart was so full when he thanked me because it was the sweetest, most gracious thank you I've ever received. He said that it was the best gift he's ever gotten. <laughs> ah, like I'm getting teary just thinking about that because I almost didn't make it for him because I thought, is he really gonna want a, you know, a crocheted blanket from his old mom? And he treasures it and I'm so, it just, it made my day. I wanna make more now, I wanna make more. Anyway, I used the pattern from Attic 24, just called the Granny Stripe Blanket. I used all minis that were in colors I thought he would enjoy, a lot of blues and reds and greens. And so yeah, that was fun. number nine and we did that rather quickly I would say uh, this is a special design that I wrote just for the winter woodland knitting retreat 
that Marie and I hosted. So as part of our swag bag um, to give to each attendant, each attendee rather, we gave them each day we'd give them something else, like a new surprise. So one of the days was so much fun, but I got to hand out this little gift bag with two skeins of Knit Fix Wool of the Andes in worsted weight. We have cilantro heather and dove heather, and they just look so nice together. And then I wrote a pattern for a cowl called the Evergreen Cowl. And it's a color work cowl, very simple design. This is a picture. And I'll show you the um, cowl in just a second. I used US 7 four and a half millimeter circular needles in the 16 inch length and US 9 five and a half mil in a 16 inch length. It took um, most of the gray yarn and not a lot of the green yarn. So they'll be, they will have plenty of that left over. And I'll just show it to you. Now, every year that we put on a retreat, I will design a new exclusive cowl, uh, not cowl, pattern of some sort. Who knows what it will be? Um, but yeah, here it is. And I think it turned out pretty cute. Yeah, really happy with it. I haven't talked to Marie about this yet, but I may see if she thinks it'd be a good idea to offer it also to Patreons, patrons only. So it would be kind of an exclusive retreat, Patreon only pattern. But there it is. And what I really like about this, and I'll show it to you on, is that I guess it's because of the color work and because of the worsted weight yarn. It um, it stands up pretty well on my neck and I like that in a cowl. Okay. There it is. Let me see if I can get the little bits not tucked under. But yeah, see? So it it stands up and it's cute and it keeps you warm at the same time. So that is all nine of my finished objects. Whoa, that feels good. It feels really good to get these out into the atmosphere <laughs> and tell you guys so that I can enjoy them now. But I am a little warm. Well, we'll see if I can do it, we'll see. All right, works in progress. So before I start with the first work in progress, I just want to say I was watching um, Amber of A Lovely Yarn and she had taken all of her mini skeins and put them into, in colors and put them into bags. So I did the same, um, although I know these don't look like the same color. These are all in the sort of pink purplish family. And I did that with each color that I had. And it is what really motivated me to finish my son's blanket and to start a new scrappy blanket. Now this is not a granny stripe blanket. It is just a double crochet blanket, keeping it in this little basket. But uh, um, I just, I love how it's turning out and I love how simple it is. This was perfect retreat knitting as well as socks. Um, let's try to get it, um, right side. Here we are. Yeah, we're on, I think we're on the right side. So, ah, it's stuck. Here is the beginning and I'm putting, so I'm doing four rounds. I'm actually going to tell you, I did, I did chain 141 with a K hook. Is this a K hook? This is an I hook. I'm sorry. One, I can ah. Let's start over, shall we? Chain 141 stitches with an eye hook, which is also a nine or a 5.5 millimeter hook. Then do four rounds of double crochet with a chain two on the end, you know, after each row before you turn. 
So four rows of that, and then two rows of single crochet in the cream. Now I'm always making sure that I'm changing colors on one side only, so that when I do the border on the um, edge, I only have to crochet in these strands so that I don't have to technically weave anything in. I did that with my son's blanket and that was so much easier <laughs> than weaving in anything. So that's what I'll do for this. Um, taking my time on it, no hurry. And I'm loving it, it's super fun. Love, these are some of my favorite colors so it's nice to work with those. So yeah, that's whip number one. Whip number two. We'll see if I can, um, nope. Trying to get it to be in the same order as my notes. Yes. So more de-stash yarn. This yarn is incredible. It is incredible. It is thick. It is hardy. I believe it's a, it's a fingering weight. Um, that information wasn't on the ball. But it is by Chappelle and it is called Patagonia. Um, Zoberball Stark 6. Don't know what that means. And start balls from the outer side. Yep, I did do that correctly. So yeah, it's a beautiful variegated self-striping kind of kind of thing. And this is what it looks like when it's knit up. As you could see, I am now working on my heel flap. It's almost done. And then I'll turn the heel. Um, yeah, love, 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 love. This feels like it's gonna last a very long time. I have another pair of crazy Zubber ball socks that did last me quite a while, but we'll see because those were knit with magic heel and these are knit with a traditional heel. So we'll see how they hold up. I'm using a US one 2.25 millimeter needle. Um, and that's really all there is to say about those. I went a little sock crazy. The next socks are also from a D stash. And this yarn is from Tia's Terrific Threads. I'll show you the ball band. Here it is. Tia's Terrific Threads. It's called Strong Sock Base. 400 yards, 100 grams, fingering weight, 80-20. The colorway is mountain. Wait till you see this beautiful colorway, guys. Holy moly. What? It's so saturated. I'm not used to socks this saturated or anything this saturated, but I'm really liking it. Here's the beginning of sock one. Isn't that cute? I love it so much. I think they're going to be such happy socks. And they just, it feels very unique and soft and lovely. So yeah, I haven't gotten very far. I am using a US one. Um, and here's my cute little scissors I got for Christmas. I got a lot of notions for Christmas. They're so fun. And I'm using a one of the bags, again, that we gave out goodies at the retreat in. I thought it was perfect for a project bag. You can see what you're making. And let's see, we're up to already number four. Another sock. Can you believe it? What is wrong with me? I think I felt like I needed to have a lot of socks on the needles for the retreat. I got a little carried away. But once again, from a D stash, this is Naughty Pine Fiber Co. This is her fog horns, no, big horn sock, 80 20. Ah, uh, la la la, 400 yards. And the name of this colorway is A Cabin Christmas. Perfect name. I actually divvied this up into two equal balls for sock making. And I'll show you how it's coming out. I, I think this one might be my favorite so far. I'm loving a cabin Christmas. Look at that. Look at those colors. 
so pretty. Nice and variegated and all the hints of pink and teal coming through. Mm, they just make me want to keep going and keep going. So I don't know. I'm thinking these will be more of a short sock. Not shorty, but shorter than my others. And what else can I say? I'm using a US one because they are also fingering weight and top down. That's it. Yeah. All right, guys, we're on to the very last finished object. Where is it? Did I bring it down? I think I might have to go grab it. Hold on a second. I will be right back. Okay, I'm back. And I have brought my last project, my last whip, which this one's a sweater. This is a paid for pattern. And I'll show you the front. This is called Gravel. And it is by Raylan Finch of No Law Knits. And it's this really cool, modern, pull over with a funnel neck and a drawstring and some top stitching at the end. And it is top down. Um, let me see what else I can tell you about it. Top down, you start with the funnel neck. It is lined with mohair, which was fun and different to do. And I am using Knit Picks palette for this in the colorway Comfrey. I have, I believe, eight balls of that. Um, I'm also using, for the lining of the funnel collar, I did use a Moen, ah, a Moen, <laughs> a Rowan Kid Silk Haze in shade 589. Uh, that really matched the Comfrey well, I felt. And I used a US 4, 3.5 mil, and a US 5, 3.75 mil knitting needles. That's what I'm using. So I'll show you what I have so far. I started the funnel neck at the retreat and got a good amount of it done. I got all of the lining done. I'm just going to try to hold it up so you can see what the heck I'm doing here. But... This will give you an idea anyway. So like I said, it is a, a drawstring. So you're making an encasement here for the drawstring. And here you can see the lining. And then now I am working on, here's the back. And now I'm working on the raglan increases. Um, Seeing a little mistake that might be able to, I might be able to fix. It's like a tiny hole that's not a hole. Um, so yeah, I think so. Now I'm just working on the increases, and yeah, that's it. And then once I'm finished with that, I guess I will continue on and you know, do it just like a regular raglan construction. So that's that i have no idea how long this will take um being that it's fingering weight it, it probably will take a good long time but i'm enjoying it and i'm hoping that it turns out well because i made a few adjustments and it's not perfect let's put it that way but i think it's going to be super cute and I'm excited to wear it and have it in my wardrobe. So, and it was very nice to find something to do with that Knit Picks palette that I bought last summer. So there's that too. So that's everything that I have been knitting and crocheting. Now I did do a little bit of weaving. So I found a tutorial online for a, um, card a, a, a weaving loom that you can make out of cardboard and like tape <laughs> so I was very intrigued by that I love anything that has a low barrier 
you know, low entrance barrier so you can just get started. You don't need money. You just, whatever you have <clears throat> on hand. So I made a loom and it worked. Like I was able to weave with it. I was so surprised. So here are the two um, wall weavings that I created with my cardboard loom. I made it two looms. I made one for this and then I made one for this. This was the second one. I'm, I brought uh, looms for everyone in Connecticut as well so I could teach my daughter and granddaughters how to weave. Um, I'll put some video in and you can see uh, Charlie weaving. She got the hang of it very quickly and Blakey was sick one day but I didn't think she was paying attention to any of the lesson and the next day she'd remembered a lot of it even though she was sick. So weaving is super fun, guys. If you haven't tried it, I do recommend. And again, this was just my first attempts. No idea what I was doing. I only did like a simple stitch, but had a great time doing it. So I do think I'm in the market for a wooden um, weaving loom because that showed me that I enjoyed it and I could do it. Uh, the last thing I wanted to talk to you a little bit about was um, our winter woodland retreat. So I'll put in some footage, just a little. I didn't film much. Um, I was too in the moment, but it was incredible in every sense of the word. It was friendships being formed, friendships being renewed. It was eating good food. It was lots of knitting. There was casting on and there was binding off. Um, there were gifts to open. We had a fire in the, in the enormous fireplace. It snowed, a gentle snow. So we had the ambiance. It was so fun. Like I did not expect this, but saying goodbye was so emotional for me. I'm not going to go into it too much because I don't want to cry on the podcast, but it was so emotional. And Marie and I were just feeling so blessed and grateful for this community. And we're going to do it again next year. I'm sure of it. We're already talking. So it was so much fun. It was a ball. <laughs> Only the guests will know what that means, but it was a ball. <laughs> All right. So now I just wanted to remind you that I did start an ASMR channel called the Autumn Acorn ASMR. I do hope you'll go and subscribe. Um, it is just, I have three sections or playlists. The first one is Nature Serenity. The second one is called Cozy Atmosphere. And the third is called Concentration Oasis. While I was in Connecticut, I was able to film some really good shots, close-ups of some birds. So I want to add some of that. I want to, I made I've already created a three hour uh, ASMR video of that. So I'll be adding that. I have plenty more videos to add, but right now there's a pretty good selection to start with. If you like that sort of thing to relax to, to sleep to, to knit to, or to concentrate to. Um, that's all folks. I hope you enjoyed episode 73. It was a long time coming. Um, Happy to get back on schedule though again. And yeah, if you're interested in joining my Patreon channel, there is an option to um, join for free for seven days. I have a lot of different tiers from a dollar all the way up to $25. $25 gets you yarn and a gift every month in the mail from me. Naturally died, I should have said. All right, I will talk to you guys later. It Ask me why I'll say, because Oscar Meyer has a way of B-O-L-O-G-N-A. <laughs> it's a perfect fire. Thank you so much.